Open your mouth. Spread your legs. Clear. Let's go. What up, what up, what up, peoples? You already know what it is. Your boy, Pistol Pete, Dog in the Yard, Season 4. Today, we had to start this thing right. You know what I'm saying? And with that being said, we got N-O-R-E in the building. You know what I'm saying? Nor are we going to be in the building. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I mean, super legendary interview. Nor we did three years and a half. You know, um, we started this whole Season 4 on some other shit. Off top. Just want to let it be known that... You know what I'm saying? We had to go with the, you know, with the, you know, broadcast king. You know what I'm saying? Nori's the one that opened all those doors, all these doors and all that shit for everybody else in this game as far as when it comes down to the podcast. Yeah, they have. They always been had. They always had podcasts, you know what I'm saying? But not on this, not on our lane. You know what I'm saying? And he brung that. He brung that. He brung that to the, to the culture. You feel me? So we appreciate that. You know what I'm saying, Nori? And uh, with that being said, you know, uh, me and Nori had a lot of fun, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate you having him on my show, you know what I'm saying? I love and I appreciate him, and uh, it was super, super, you know, we had a lot of fun, man. He brought drink champs to Dog in the Yard, you know what I'm saying? Because off top, Nori was asking me questions. I was like, hold up, man, you in, my, you, you in the yard, you know what I'm saying? How, you asking me questions, you know what I'm saying? Let's say that for drink champs, but with that being said, we had a lot of fun, man. I appreciate you having um, Nori on my show. You know what I'm saying? Nori did three years and a half. You know, uh, for those that don't know, uh, he was up top, Raggers Island days and all that. And he's going to um, break that shit down to us, you know? And with that being said, let's just get right to it, man. You already know. Season four. You already know. Drink champ. N-O-R-E. Your boy, Pistol. <laughs> When you in that Tampa Bay area, make sure you reach out to my boy, Gus Torres, man. If you want anything that has to do with real estate, man, make sure you hit him up. You get the lowest prices and the finest houses, man. Trust me when I tell you. But don't forget to mention my name. You already know that Pistol P to get you that early discount. And that's my brother, man, Gus Torres. You already know, out in the Tampa Bay area. Make sure you hit him up, man. Sell, buy, invest, all that. Make sure you hit him up, man, because he focused with that out there. Tampa Bay, you already know, it's your boy Pistol, man. Get at me. What up, what up, what up? You already know what it is, your boy Pistol Pete. And you already know, it's that dog in the yard. And today we got that boy NRE in the yes, motherfucker. That's thing. right, baby. You know what I'm saying? Straight out of Queens. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Don't get it fucked up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Drink champ, smoke yes. champ. Yes, sir. All that on deck. What's yes, up, sir. Nori? I'm hanging in there, man. Good to see you, man. Yes, very sir. proud boy, of you, bro. You're my brother, man. Very, so, very, you know, yeah, my I brother, get, too. I, get, I, get, I, I salute you yes. in a whole different vibe. Yes. We Sa family. Same way. You know um, I'm very, very proud of you because... um. Uh, what you doing, taking your own life in your own hand, mm -hmm. that's a beautiful thing. A lot of brothers don't understand how beautiful that is, you know what I'm saying? Just, Facts. you know what I mean, um, standing on your own. Like, you know, you, you being down with a conglomerate, being down. Mm -hmm. But what makes you great is what you do on your own. And Facts. I've been watching, I've seen the Steve LaBelle joint. I've been watching, you know, mm -hmm. see, seeing what's going on. So uh, I think I've seen the Big U joint. It was just just Big U, right? It was Big yeah, U yeah, and somebody. No, oh, oh, okay. U. Oh no, I, I think Joe and Khaled was there that, that time. Yep, yep. So I'm watching what's going on. I'm trying to fuck with you on the audio. You know what I mean? So just yeah, in yeah. case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. in case, man. You Facts. know, we got we got that audio. Um, but, but we definitely um, gonna talk. Cause I'm doing my yeah. my my my, my, right. my they want um, my documentary on wow, the audio. Wow, wow, that's hard. That's hard. What, what, what's the name of the documentary? Um, the life and story of Pistol okay. Pete. That's fire. That's fire. You know what I'm that's why that. you already know, right? And all, hey, what's up, man? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm happy. Like I said, man. Let me ask you one question before we get started. Yeah. Have you ever met the other Pistol Pete? Yeah. Oh, you met him? Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. So, what was your relationship like? Nah, you should say that for drink champs. <laughs> all right. Cool. Cool. Nah, nah. It's your shit. It's your shit. I just want to know. I'm curious. Yeah. Cause I'm curious. Cause y'all both that. two legendary yeah, Bronx yeah. niggas. Right? Yeah. Uh, some G shit. Right. You gotta say shit like that. Cause that right. shit gotta be clear. Like yeah. a lot of people be confused and yeah, shit. Like exactly. That. Exactly. You know what exactly. exactly. But I'm gonna give it to you. Right okay. Now, yeah. Right? Yeah. Go you know ahead. Saying? Tell me. This is your shit. Come on. I met. I met. I met. We when I went to MDC in Brooklyn. Okay. Oh yeah. That's the Fed joint. The Fed in Brooklyn. Um, 
he came and shit. I was with all his co defenders and shit right. like that. You know, it was a whole bunch of them. Right. So they was with me and all that. I came to the building. They want me. They threw me out of MCC in, in wow. Manhattan. Manhattan. Yeah. They, they said, yo, this nigga too strong. We're going right. to ship him to Brooklyn. Wow. Hopefully he'll be all right. Wow. Over there, he don't really know nobody. Wow. Same shit. God wow. damn, it was all good. And Pistol was, uh, uh, he was upstairs. And his, mm -hmm. one of his coldies came, he was like, yo, Pistol, want to meet you, man. Right. He's on the gate, you know uh, what I'm saying? He's like, yo. So he came to the gate. Uh, he was like, yo, man, what's up, legend? What's uh, up, Pistol, man? Uh, yo, it was a pleasure, man, you uh, know what I'm saying? Uh, Damn, I heard so much about you. Uh, I was like, me too. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I said, I, said, I heard a whole bunch of shit. Uh, and, I, you know, and the most important thing out of all is that uh, you're a stand-up individual. Uh, and you're good and you're holding it down. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So I wish you a lot of luck, you know what I'm uh, saying? Uh, and you stay up and you you know right. you stay healthy and all that because you know this shit gonna be you know it's gonna be rough. Right. He said, No, I know. He said, Damn, it was a pleasure meeting you right. though, man. Right. He said, I said, You repping you repping the name, so you know, right. do you. Right. He was like, that's what that's it fire. is, man. He said, Yo, love, pistol, and then we vibe, we laugh, we it was all good. That's fire, bro. That's fire. You know what I'm saying? Look, I helped y'all out, man. A lot of people wanted to ask this question. Nah, they've been asking that question yeah. for a long time. They be, everybody be trying to like, yo, what's up and this, that, but how, you know, nah. You man. don't drink, right? Nah. I'm okay, really. cool, cool. You just leave it here for a look. Nah. <laughs> Unless you want to drink. I, I don't, nah, but I'll drink one. I'll take uh, one shit. I'll, 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 I'll take one with you, yeah. Which one you, yeah. yeah, you want to open then? Nah, get the, what, this one? you like? I'll do this one. Here, come on, open it, Diego, please. The first bottle. Yeah. You know and then we're going to leave this for you, yeah. for the dog in the yard. This is the okay. most expensive one anyway. This is okay. $590 a bottle. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. So we're leaving that for the dog in the yard. That's what you know is. what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah, uh -huh. no, we, um, uh -huh. so, you know, let's get right to it, no man. No problem. Um, did, you know, I know that you've been in prison before. Yeah. Back in, uh, uh, 92. Yeah. Um, uh, I'll just get straight to it. Um, it was crazy. Um. The day that I got, well, this is, I'm gonna tell you the crime. I've never spoke about this officially. Like, my, my, it's a dude that's um, down with my company uh, named Tito, and he been trying to get me to talk about this crime for years. Well, anyway, Tupac came out with this movie called Juice. Mm -hmm. I went to what's called a matinee. I don't think they got matinees no more, <laughs> but matinee. So I went there at like 11 o'clock. It was a crackhead from my hood um, excuse me, that was in my hood from Bushwick. I had an empty 38. The crackhead walks up to, uh, excuse me. I had 38 bullets. Right. The crackhead came up to me with an empty 38. It's like, yo, I got this for sale. So I was like, he, and he gave it to us because he knew nobody had bullets, but he didn't know I had the bullets on me. Mm. So as I put the shit in, I, I, I put the, he gave it to me, everyone else is looking at it, but I put the bullets in. I told the dude, I said, yo, I want to see you run. So he goes, what? And I just, I pulled out and I was, mom, mom, mom. He didn't actually run for the first two shots. Like he looked like, cause he's like, he was surprised. Cause he's like, no, you don't got no fucking, there's no bullets in there. And then, so anyway, that day, Thanks. salute. 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 To Dog and Yard. Yo, 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 yo. So, that day I had adrenaline. I was just running around, I had a, a 38, Rusty 30 I just had adrenaline. And um, I went to the movies. So I went to the movies. That Bishop character fucked me up. Like, here, leave the bottle over here because I want the shit to shine. Uh, <laughs> it, yeah, looks, it looks good, it looks good. Yeah. So, um, what happened was, this movie theater doesn't exist no more, but it's across the street from, um, uh, it's Queens Boulevard. Right down the block is where they filmed Coming to America, McDowell's. So anyway, it's a dude that, uh, I was out stealing bikes. I was out stealing bikes when I was a little nigga. And I used to go to Corona. Corona's not soft. I used to steal bikes in Corona. Cause I was Puerto Rican. I was black and Puerto Rican, but I knew enough Spanish to fuck with the Baldies. You know yeah. what I'm saying? To come around the circle. To come around, you know what I'm saying? So motherfuckers knew. So I used to steal bikes. So the dude caught me stealing a bike one day and he was from Corona. So he's like, yo, little poppy, let me help you out. So I'm like, all right, bet. I'm like 11 years old at the time. So I'm, I'm, this is how bad of a kid I was. I was riding one bike, and I'm holding a whole nother bike. Both so the bring dude, one home. I'm bringing one home to the, to, to, the, to the project. So the dude is like, yo, I got you. So I got you, I'm gonna bring it to the, uh, I'll bring it to Junction Boulevard later. So I'm like, all right, bet. I think we had beepers back then or some shit like that. He gave me his beeper number. He never beat me back. Mm. He never hit me, so I didn't see him until I was 14. 
and I'm in the movie theater. This is my second time going to see Juice. Same day. I'm hype. So I see the dude, and I remember my boy Outlaw, to this day, Outlaw, Trey Outlaw, I owe you. Because I had the big nine on me. And I wanted to use that. I was the nine or the four fifth. It was the, you know, the same type of look. Right. So Outlaw seen that when I seen the dude, so Outlaw grabbed it and just put it in his shit. But he didn't know I had another joint. So anyway, but, but to get, get to the point, dude sees me outside. He's like, yo, you still mad at me? And I'm like, yeah. So I pull out. I, th I, had, I had a 22 later. Earlier I had the 38, but I had a 22. And it's crazy because when I shot, I shot six times. I only hit him twice. But the other four was in the gas station. So the gas station sued me. I didn't even know. Like They, they said that I was reckless endangerment because had a... A uh, shit missed and hit the gas tank, I would have killed the whole fucking block. How old you was? I was 14. Word, I was 14. That's the reason why they wouldn't use my name. Like, when they reported it... Yeah, they couldn't use your they name. They couldn't use my name because I was I was too young. So I didn't go to the island. I went to Sparfit. Yeah, it was just, okay. I went to Sparfit. To the Bronx. I was in... Uh, this is my, my second time in Sparfit. Well, this is my first time, excuse me. Cause I did six months, then I got RR'd. Then I didn't know how to get a lawyer. I was an idiot. So I thought RR meant you beat the case. <laughs> I was like, so I was, out the door. <laughs> they said, you, you leaving. I'm like, oh, shit, I won. I had no idea. This is the first time I got snitched on, too, bro. Because I know I'm bouncing around. But So when, after this shit happened, the police came to my house. And I remember I didn't throw the jacket away because the jacket was so fly. It was a felar jacket. It was ski. It had the yellow lines in it. So after I shot the dude like a bozo, I thought the jacket was still good. Like, yeah. I didn't know about gunpowder. So the police come to my house, and they're like, yo, they, they cool as shit. They're like, yo, bro, they calling me Poppy because that's my name in my hood. They're like, yo, Poppy, yo, um, um, you know, they saying that you did shot him. But if you get taken to the hospital and he don't say you did it, we letting you go right there. Mm. So they didn't even put handcuffs on me. So I was like, all right, cool. This guy's a G. Yeah, I'll never forget it. I walk in the hospital room, this dude is eating Cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> the way he was comfortable, I knew I was going to jail. Like, the, Cause I'm looking, like you're supposed to be uncomfortable. Like they supposed to be questioning you. But he's sitting there like, <sighs> he's like, yo, what's up, Pop? And I'm like, so I didn't want to make eye contact because his energy was too ill. So he goes, yo, I'm going to see you in 15, 20 years, all right? And then starts eating the Cheetos. So they go, is this the guy that shot you? And he looks at me, and I, I, when I do make eye contact, and he just takes another Cheetos and goes, absolutely, officer. Ooh. That's the guy that shot me. Right in your face. In my face. That's back in the days for And this is, this is, he's a tough guy. This guy's not yeah. no. You, I, you didn't expect that. You just, I didn't expect that. So immediately, boom, I go to Sparfit. But mind you, the crazy shit is, what I didn't realize is he's handcuffed. He had cracks on him. Mm. So when they, you know, I didn't realize he was handcuffed. Oh, so he went to jail too. He went to jail too. So he like, let's take them all down. <laughs> he's, yeah. He's like, we all caught. But yeah, we all going so, down. So um, so like at the spot for his man's and them said, yo, send the word to the island. And I'm like, I didn't know what that meant. They're like, send the word to the island. This nigga's on the island. Niggas think he's right. He's 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 to be fooled. He told on you. You got paperwork on the dude. Yeah. So I didn't know how to send the word. It was, uh, I think it was Cheng Bing. I think it was Cheng Bing, with Cheng Bing from the Bronx. Linked up with him, linked up with him, me and him, he was about 14, 15, in Sparford together. And I, I, I had to tell things from the, from the BX. The things from the BX got the word, and that's when he had uh, problems on the island. And that's when he tried to drop this shit. Mm. But once the state, the state got, like, they had this state. Yeah, they didn't want to let that shit go. Yeah, they didn't let that shit go. So, so, so what happened with that? What, 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 what wound up happening? So what happened was, um, I had got all, uh, and then the state picked it up. So I copped out. They were still as a minor, so I had to do three and a half years. Hmm. I had one and a half to four and a half. <laughs> Wound up doing three and a half. I went to, to so I'm still 15, because I didn't go to the island yet. So what happened is, I did like a, a one and a half, two, two and a half years, and then the dude died. So when the dude died, they automatically attached me. I had nothing to do with it. Right. 
But he died around my way. He died within 14 blocks of... of, of uh, so they brought me downstate. That's my first time going to the island. Because mm. now I'm, I'm... And I'm on the island, 15, 16. This is C-74. Out of this, this is not This is not no game. Like, I'm... I'm by the way... This is not regular at by, all. By, by, by the way, when, I'm up, know, when I'm up north at, at the 15, 14-year-old <laughs> Harlem Valley, that's where all the, the juveniles from the island is going. Mm -hmm. So these niggas is ripping your face every fucking day. I'm there, you know, Sherman the Worm, Ching Bing, um, who else? Uh, 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 Mac Moten... Uh, who else was in there? Anthony Jamont, Jamel Simon. These is these is dudes that's, that's just there forever. Uh, Paul Rivera, uh, Harlem dude. Um, I'm with, I'm there with the Central Park Five. You know what I'm saying? Like um, so like I said, I went, so I went downstate. So when I went downstate, when they brought me down, I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm supposed to go back to Spafford. I'm like, yo, <laughs> they're like, oh no, you're adult now, homie. So. Man, that's that's my story. Where, 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 where was your where was your um where was your upbringing like like as far as you had your mom's your dad I had, yo, listen. you know your brothers siblings and all yeah. that like where it was at when you, when, you, you, well, when you was getting in trouble like this like my, your mom's my father like my father was the ultimate Puerto Rican uh I'm talking, when I say the ultimate Puerto Rican I'm talking about with the tail three earrings five hundred thousand tattoos never wore a shirt <laughs> like. Played handball all day, Newports, and when he did have a shirt, Newports right here or Newports right here on the yeah. side. So he was just like my mother was the exact opposite. My mother didn't understand street life at all. Like I, I tell you like this, before my pops died, he got to see my very first global historic record, which is Super Thug. Mm. And when he saw it on TV, he had to come up to me and grab me. He was like, "I'm so sorry, Papito." And I and I said, why are you sorry? He said, I thought you was lying the whole time. <laughs> like he thought I was lying being a rapper. He thought I was gonna be a piece of shit. Yeah, he, he thought you was in a whole different world. Yeah, so so around moms, he was fronting like he really believed I was yeah, a rapper. Yeah, but he didn't believe me this whole time. So oh, it, was, it was it was hard. He was just going with it. He was just going with it. <laughs> when he actually saw me on TV, he grabbed because my father was an affection. He was not an affectionate guy. Because it's like the first time he hugged and hugged me. So he went and let me go, and he's like, I'm so sorry. And I was like, why? And he's like, I, you know, I thought you would be a piece of shit the rest of your life. Wow. I didn't think you would, you know, he's like, you're my son, so I can say this to you. He like, wasn't a great kid. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, shit, shit. you was busting your gut at 14. <laughs> yeah, so. Like, shit. Yeah, so, um, yeah, but that's what it, really what it was. And um, so how your mom's was taking all this, being that she was in front of the street? My, mom, my mom's is a square. My mom's is, um, she's not she's not about that. Like, she would come up every Sunday Every visit, every, no matter where I was at, and um, uh, yeah, so it was different. It was difficult for her. It was hard for her. I'm yeah, saying. very I hard. For her. You yeah. have siblings? Yeah, I got, I got a brother, sister, and I got an older brother in Chicago. Um, that's like uh, straight Puerto Rican, and they were all they were all show me support. Like again, um, are you close to them? Do you, yeah, do you talk I, I, to them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I spoke to my sister uh, two days ago because my sister's very religious. And that's what I believe cool. DMX is, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. whenever something happened with DMX, I call all my family that's, you know, that believe in, in, in Christian, yeah, in the Christian course. faith. Yeah. And I ask them to pray for them. I ask them because, you know, I'm sorry to get into a little dark area, but like every time I'm around DMX, I feel like God is watching us. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like that shit is like some spooky, scary shit. Like I jump yeah, in the yeah, car yeah. with DMX before I'm talking about we drank 16 bottles straight. And I drank, I jumped in the car with him drunk as fuck. And felt safe. Like, felt safe. I felt like God was driving, not him. So, you know, when something happens to him... So, right now, the way yeah. his conditions and what he's going through and shit right now, at this point, which you must be, like, really I'm, fucked up about I'm it. I'm terrible. I mean, I'm, you're pretty I, close to him yeah, and shit. I, I ain't gonna lie. I spoke to him two days ago because I I, I sent him a contract. Because, you know, like I told, like I said earlier, yeah. I'm starting um, our own audio shit. Right. So we agreed on the television, and we agreed on the, um, the visual. So I was only closing out the audio part of my deal with him. And he called me, and he was like, uh, I was like, oh, um, just, just take out the Earl Simmons. I, I, I want it to be bloodline. So I was like, all right, cool. Because, you know, if you if you homies, you don't put nothing in your name. You go do an LLC. That mm -hmm. LLC builds your credit, builds your company name. Facts. And I told him that. And he called me back and he said, you know, so that's where he wanted the contract to reflect. And then as I'm calling him, calling him back, I didn't, excuse me, I didn't call him back. I called Craig back and Craig didn't answer. And then I fell asleep 
And then Buster called me at 12.31. And my bedtime is like 8, 9 o'clock. I'm up. I'm up. Early Serious. Guy. I'm 6 o'clock in the morning, 8 o'clock at night. Yeah. I'm done. I'm there um, with you. Yeah, with you know what I'm saying? I'm early in the morning. So yeah. when Buster called me at 12.30, I knew something was wrong because he knows my bedtime. So I woke up at 2.30. I didn't want to check my messages. But then I woke up at 4 because I couldn't sleep. And I looked at all my messages, and I was just like, damn, bro. You know? Did it surprise you? Yeah, it surprised me because... You thought he was really over it, right? Yeah, but you know what it is? We got more demons in New York City when you're from New York City. Facts. The thing is, I noticed that. Like, when I go to New York, because me, I'm not a dude that don't answer my phone. Like, if you call me, I'm going to answer. Yeah. I'm, and I'm going to tell you whatever. So when I go to New York, I be feeling so obligated to see certain individuals that really I shouldn't be seeing. Mm -hmm. I'm just seeing them because I'm in town. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm just in town. I don't really belong with these guys. Not like I'm better than anybody. I'm not saying that at you're all. You're on a whole different block. What I'm vibe. just saying is certain, like if you're on the block for 18 years, you don't really have a plan. You don't want to be on the block for 18 that's, years. That's all you're doing. You know what I'm saying? So like, and if I reach out, actually that's my fault. That's my mistake. You know what I'm saying? Like when you look at Chink's Drugs and you look at Stack Bundles, these dudes got killed in their own neighborhood. Not their own you know, city, their own actual neighborhood. Yeah. Which lets you know, like, we stayed too long. You know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes, sometimes we we we, we feel guilty for winning. Mm -hmm. So you want to give back, which is great. Giving mm -hmm. back is great. I love it. But don't give back so much that you take away from yourself. Facts. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm... No, I get it, Norby, because yeah. I, I, I yeah. you know, I deal with a bunch of, you know, street mm -hmm. guys, and sometimes right. I feel like I be in neighborhoods where it be... Mm -hmm. Should be low. It should be like the precinct, man. Mm -hmm. Guns all over. Mm -hmm. Yo, pistols coming through, so you know they extra focus, making mm -hmm. sure that I'm good, and mm -hmm. you know. But it's, I guess, it's my fault, like you said. Right. Sometimes, you know, we we are at fault for yep. being loyal. Yep. For being just being loyal, because that's Yo, all. Listen, that's still there the is a such thing called being too loyal. Yeah, it is. You know, yeah. So, so you you become too loyal, and then mm -hmm. you have fault for you being too loyal mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you want you don't want to get one of getting hurt. You yep. don't want that, you know, dudes that be you, they're unappreciative to you. Yep. You know what I'm saying? You go through a lot. Trust me, man. Mm -hmm. I know about that, yep. that, the whole New York demon shit. You yep. know what I'm saying? And that's the reason, you know, I, I come and go. Yep. I love that's New York. I, we love New York. Yeah, I love New York. York. I'm, I'm never going to not be from New York. Me? We, 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 and we will always rep New York. But when I heard what happened with X, and then look at the hospital. Just look at the hospital where they at. Mm -hmm. That shit is right by the projects. Yeah. That shit is around the corner from the projects. From the hood. Yeah, from the hood. And let me just tell you something. DMX is the most purest person I ever met. Like, he don't even know how to lie. Yeah. He doesn't even he know, doesn't how. know how to lie. Like, I tried I to get him you. to lie. I tried to get him to lie. Yeah, you, so you're going you're gonna to show up at uh, uh, 805? And he'll be like, I'll show up, show up. <laughs> like, he won't look at me and like, yeah. say, because he knows he's not going to show up at 805. He knows he's going to come at 845. So I'll be looking at him like, yeah, so 803, you going to be there. He'll be like, I'm going to be there. Around that tone, but he won't commit to the lie. Yeah, and yeah. I just, I'll be, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. He's so, so much of a pure soul that like he's genuine, man. Super genuine, man. Super genuine. Well, you know, listen, man. All yep. our praise is up for yep. him and all that. Yes. We, I got a bunch of people praying. I pray mm -hmm. for him. You know, I'm a Christian myself, so right. you know, I, I, I say I pray for him all, all day. And he's a great, he, and he rep God. Yeah, you know what I'm nah, saying. He, so, he's God. so we we all expect for God to be there right now, right? Yep. So yep. you know, they just leave it like that. Yeah, for you real. You know what I'm saying? For real. But, salute. um, salute. salute. So, um, Nori, salute. man, you know, mm -hmm. um, yeah. um, so you went to you went to jail. Mm -hmm. You did three years and a half. Well, let me just, let me just. Your Ragged Island experience. Okay, let me, let me, let me skip over this because I'm working, and this is in DFY, right? I'm working in the joint, and this is a guy who comes up to me. Well, he's named, now named Sherm the Worm, right? But back then, he was just Sherm. Mm. So he comes up to me and goes, yo, man, you remind me of my friend. So I say, who? He goes, this guy named Kayam. So I'm like, all right, cool. We meet up. We go to the church. Church in, in this DFY is called Billy Wade. So I'll never forget it. For Billy Wade, we in there. And I meet who Kayam is, and that's who Capone. That's how me and Capone met. Wow. We met in Billy Wade Church in DFY. In DFY. <laughs> Trading weed. Because I said, yo, you got that weed. That juvenile detention, <laughs> right? Juvenile detention. For those that don't know, juvenile <laughs> right. detention. Well, so that's where I, I met um, 
And just for people that don't know, um, Sherman the Worm is supposed to be like a, you know, big jail, blood dude. You know, he's from um, Queensbridge and moved to Left Rack, but he's the guy who actually, you know, got me and Pwn together. Look ahead, what was the question? Then so, so, okay. so, no, so, so, so now, mm. so you did three years and a half. Yeah. Now, I, well, I did like almost the three years, then like I told you, Homeboy died. When Homeboy died, they shit you back. that's when they, they sent me downstate to go to court. And then when they realized I ain't had nothing to do with it, like right. I just, you know. So how long you was in the island for? When like, you... That was like six months, maybe four. And how was your experience at Rikers Island? Uh, that was the wild shit. That was the, the wild shit because the I- First I, date, second date. It was it was crazy because um, you gotta realize Rikers Island's in Queens. Mm -hmm. So I'm passing through my hood like, oh shit. Yeah. I'm, nigga, that shit might as well be in Arkansas. Cause it's although it's right there, it's Anybody? not there at all. Yeah, it's on a fucking you know what I mean. Like, mm -hmm. so uh, they say it's East Elmhurst. They're lying. That's not East Elmhurst, bro. <laughs> like, East Elmhurst, Hazen Street, I believe it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. They're lying, bro. That shit is a whole nother world. So when I got there, it was great that I seen all my dudes from Sparfit that had it locked down. But it's, it was real. Like you had to just put it. Like the phones was real. Like to use the phone. Was real. Like, you had, it had to have a certain time. It was prime time. Did you ever went to altercations? I mean, I, I ain't gonna lie, I let us never, know about any event that you went through. That's what I want to know. Not on the island. Not on the island. On the island, I actually knew everybody. Anybody so, you haven't seen in months? Yeah, so I, so, but I actually had more problems in DFY <laughs> okay. than I did, uh, did on the island. So on the island was more smooth because you knew a lot of people. I was smooth because I knew a lot of people. And then, um, yeah. And what's so, the craziest things you've seen on the island? Like, you, you can share with the public. I, I'm gonna tell you, it's not even on the island. I'm gonna tell you, this is, this is, I didn't even know Fat Joe, but there was a dude named Raymond Montez. I think that's his name, Raymond Montez. He's from Brook Avenue. And the only time they used to let us go in each other's cells was when we got um, commissary. So everybody can, you know, I'll give you some Hydrox, you know, you say give me some Twinkies or whatever. One time, Raymond Montez, he took a piece of cardboard and he said, they all, they all called me Left Racks. I was like, Yo, Left Rack, come here, I'm gonna put you on, don't tell nobody. So I right, bet. He put a piece of cardboard, he put it in the vent. And this motherfucker can see, he can hear everybody's cell. So he knew, the only thing I didn't respect from him was he knew who everybody shit, but he was a thief. He wasn't a robber. Uh -huh. I respect a robber. So what he would do is, he'll go and he'll go and he'll put the, he made me more of a worse criminal, by the way. Yeah, yeah, he woke you. <laughs> he did not. He, this was not rehabilitation, bro. When you could take a piece of cardboard and you could put it to the thing and you could tell me what Kuda Dre is doing on the other side of the room yeah. and you can hear it, like, this was the illest shit. That he made me a worse criminal. Him and this guy named Chubbs from, from Harlem. But um, that was the illest shit, like, that, like, just... Because I thought, you know, at the time, I was just a Queens dude. Right. I didn't really go to, to, and you to the was Bronx. What, 16? I'm, I'm 14. I'm 14. I'm 14, 15. Okay. But I didn't really go to the Bronx. To me, Bronx was was far out. To me, you know, I went to Harlem because of weed. Uh, I didn't go to Brooklyn. I had no reason. I went to Albee Square Mall. Okay. I got fronts at Albee Square Mall. But um, <laughs> that that was really it. But me colliding with these other barrels, mm -hmm. they made me a worse nigga. <laughs> like, they yeah. made me a worse... I'm sorry. They made yeah, me a worse yeah, yeah. person. Like, instead of, like... Because, first of all, jail does not rehabilitate you. You rehabilitate yourself. Facts. You know what I'm saying? If you don't want to get better, you're like... If you don't want to change, some, you're never going to change. Of the worst, some of the worst things that could happen to somebody is going to jail and not having problems. Mm -hmm. Because those dudes just go right back. Like, I knew a dude, I don't want to say his name, you know, he passed away. Um, but I knew a dude from my hood, like, he didn't feel comfortable home. Like yeah, he was yeah. home. I know a whole bunch of them like that. Yeah, yeah. it's always some like mm -hmm. the hood. Mm -hmm. You always got two or three of them that mm -hmm. they, they stay in prison. They, they rather be in prison. They're like, yeah. yo, man, nobody yeah. gonna feed you. Their whole life, they, like, they either they sniffing dope mm -hmm. or they back in jail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So nobody. So when you came home, what, what year you came home after, after you know going through your uh, Rikers Island experience and, well, and DFY and all that? I came home late '96, early '97. And how I old had you was? Six months to get a job. Mm. This is why hip hop is a beautiful thing. First of all, my P.O. violated so many people, the feds came and got him. The feds gave him a job. That's how good he was violating. Yeah, like, yeah. He was just a violator. <laughs> he should have been down with Chris He was Knight. a king P.O. <laughs> he, he just, like, he used to come, like, like this nigga used to just, I used to go to his shit, he just grabbed my balls immediately. Like, yo, what the fuck? Like, for real, like, on some, in front of everybody. He like, yo, job. get against the wall. Yeah. Like, boom, like, yeah. 
You know, I know niggas that go to the, went to their parole offices with. So you can't go straight to I that. I, yeah, I went. I went straight to it. Um, and it was crazy because, mind you, when up, when we was up north, me and Paul went to the board together. I got hit with eighteen months. They let him out, and you know you happy for your man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you sick in the inside. <laughs> Yeah, no, you funny, bro. Nah, you be sick, right? Nah, it's a fact. You can't sleep that night. Yo, you all fucked up that day. I'm happy for the dude. I'm like, yo, you go home. They give you a date and everything. No, he's a funny motherfucker. They give you a date and everything. Give me a date. They said 18. I said, damn. And the date that they actually did give me, I didn't want to look at it. Yeah, yeah, was like, yo. And the phone is happy, and I'm looking like, wow. And so the good thing is, you know, Pone never, I'm going to be honest, Pone wasn't obligated to hold me down. Like, he wasn't, we were friends in jail. Yeah. Most people would just be friends in jail, and that's it. That's it. They come home, they forget. We see you 10 years of later. Course. So, yeah. when I came home, this is like a, uh, like I said, a year and a half, 18 months later, maybe. I came home, and I go to Queensbridge, because me and him, we didn't have numbers. You know, numbers wasn't the shit back then. Right. So, I go to Queensbridge, and they like, who you talking about, Capone? Because I called him Cayenne. Uh -huh. I was like, you talking about Capone? And I'm like, what? And this, this dude was signed to Faith Newman. Uh, the same person who signed Nas. And like, Pone wasn't rhyming in jail. So I was confused. Like, he rhymed. Don't get it twisted. He just threw you off. But I'm like, wait a minute. And when he found out I was home, he was like, fuck this solo shit. That's why, I, you know, I held Pone down. That's fucking He was real. like, fuck this solo shit. That's this real. is the real artist. Because... Alright, oh, damn, I'm skipping around, but yeah, this is what made me a this what made me an MC. At night, this is when I go to JU. This is when you came home. No, no, this is this is JU. This is still in uh, um, Harlem Valley. Okay. Now J Unit is only Brooklyn and Bronx niggas. Right. Anybody from Queens, Long Island, you're having a problem. Mm -hmm. All of these niggas is temp murders and murders, right? They 15 and more. They also the college unit. So if you get into the college, this is the unit you have to go to. So we're in J unit. I think uh, Pong, Ching Bing, all of them is our unit. That's the other one, right? So in my unit is this kid that's the man. His name is B-Wise. He's he running through. He's smoking motherfuckers in the cypher. I'm at nighttime, I just write rhymes. The Brooklyn niggas is seeing me. The Brooklyn and the Bronx niggas is like, yo, what's up, B? What you be doing at nighttime? Like, you know, I'm vibing to Hot 97 because I would listen to Hot 97 mm. and I would write the rhymes over the beats. So they ain't like B Y. So they just like, yo, let, let, me, let me hear this shit. Mm. So they start the whole shit in the yard the next day. They're like, yo, Left Rack is the man. B Wise, we running you up out of here. And he's like, what? Like, tell them we can battle right now. And I had never had a battle before, so I'm like, this is a battle in the yard. Like, these <laughs> everybody got knives. You took that shit to the yard. Everybody got knives. So I'm like, and the Brooklyn niggas <laughs> just started. Like, they just they just don't want him to be the man no more. They don't really care if I'm yeah, they good. Done. They done with yeah, they just done with him. So I'm, but they throw me, the, the, I'm the dog in the yard now. Yo, so I'm like, know, yeah, do you so, out there. And I remember, I remember this rhyme, I'll never forget this shit. This is what made me win. So he comes up to me, he goes, he, he says shit. But I remember, like, he's not applying his words to me. You can tell all his rhymes is written. Mm. So I say some shit like, yo, bro, them braids or some shit. Like, I, and everybody, oh. And I go, yo, I don't give a fuck. Because when I was six, I did a stick up in the Tonka truck. And the gel went crazy. <sighs> and every, <laughs> me feeling these people, <sighs> Yeah. And it was like I was in the Apollo even though I was in jail. Yeah. And I was like, that, 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 that noise, I love that shit. I want it. And that, from that moment on, I knew I would be a rapper. I didn't know how. You you was onto something though. I, I knew, I knew, I you knew. Had it. Yeah, I knew, I knew I was gonna be a rapper. I knew something. So then but, you came home a year, what? And then I came from home that point. A year. I came home late ninety six, early ninety seven. So right? Capone's so, at home. I, and I and Capone's home here, he has a he has a deal. He says, um, chill, I'm gonna wait to do the Capone and Noriega shit. My PO, 
Uh, listen, I, and I said, I've never said this. Never said this. Only a dog I, in the I actually went to McDonald's in Queen Center Mall. Swear to God. Filled out application and all that. They didn't want me. <laughs> I was that you thirsty. Get job. I couldn't get a job Damn. at McDonald's, bro. Fucked I up. was fucked up. I was like, yo, it's over for me. Like, I plan. First off, the reason why they, they paroled me was I used the address with nonviolence. I used a Seattle. My moms and pops lived in Seattle, Washington. They had, by the time I was in jail, my father wanted to start a new life, so he moved to Seattle, Washington. When I used that address, it was Tacoma Federal Way, Seattle, Washington. They was like, you going to live here? I was like, yeah. They said, if you live here, we'll parole you. I said, yeah, I'm living there. <laughs> Facts. Yeah. You tell them anything. So I had six months, actually, to get my things together, and I had to get the hell out. Or I'm going back to jail. So like I said, Capone did that. P.O. stressing me. And... We do a freestyle on Hot 97. And the freestyle on Hot 97 led us to the record deal. Mm. And the record deal led me to freedom. So hip hop literally saved my life because had I not had that, I would be a guy living in Seattle, Washington right now selling fireworks. Mm. Dead serious. No joke to that. Wow. No joke to that. I swear to God. Um, and yeah, so hip hop saved my life, came home. Uh, did it and then got violated because even though that was a job, mm. me and Capone were both parolees. We weren't even supposed to be yeah, together. Was be, yeah, I wasn't supposed to be together. <laughs> so that was a problem. Especially for your super peer. Yo. Listen, and he signed off at first. At first he's like, all right, cool. Because you know you get a job, they got to they gotta sign off his supervisors, yeah, yeah, you everybody. Mm -hmm. But when they realized I was supposed to mention that, I said, I ain't supposed to mention that. I don't know his background. And that's the truth. Like, I don't know. Yeah, you don't even think about it. Yeah, I don't think like that. And they're mm -hmm. like, yo. And then it's crazy because Poe and P.O. was mad cool. <laughs> like, Poe had the exact opposite P.O. <laughs> he was mad. And I, I had the dickhead. But then Poe got... Then what happened was... I, I Before I had that P.O., I had violated another P.O. But then... Let, let's not go that. But... Then Poe got caught with the guns. So when Poe got caught with the guns, this was his, his second bit... I reported to to parole like I always do, pissed in the cup, and I'm just this guy. I'm sorry. When you say pissed in the cup, for those that don't know, yeah, I had, for the, yeah, for yeah, the I, had to, I had to, I had to piss. I, they had to make sure my urine was clean, and like like I said, this was super PO. So he's like this at my joint. He looking like this. That's his supervisor. Yeah. So so I pissed, and he asked me. He goes, "So where's um Kyam at?" I'm like, I don't know. Maybe she asked his, his pro officer. Maybe he knows. He's like, so you don't know where he's at? I, I'm sorry. This is just who I am. Yeah. So I'm like, no. He's like, so you don't know your partner's in jail right now for five guns. And I'm like, really? I'm <laughs> acting it out. I'm sorry. I just, I just got my Denzel on. I was like, really? <clears throat> Obviously, I knew he was in jail, but that's not my job to tell you your yeah, job. You're not there to volunteer information. So immediately got me against the wall handcuffed me, put me on a bus to go back, and his supervisor came and was like, yo, what did you do? I said, I just was, you know, whatever, whatever. And his supervisor said, yo, uncuff that man. Uncuff him, man. He can't, he can't be guilty by association. Like, if they were together, if he was in the same facility when his partner had yeah, the guns, he would have been arrested with him anyway. But he said, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, um, the guy's on a, a righteous path. I swear to God, I ain't say nothing. I was just sitting there, on, child, wow, you know, because you, you know when you, get, when you get violated, they put you next to a whole bunch of other niggas that's just violated. Yeah. You're sitting there like, yo, what you here for? Like, yo, man, I pissed dirty. you like, fuck. And then the other dude is like, yo, man, I lost my job. Forgot to tell him. The other dude is like, yo, I got locked up. And I forgot to come home and tell my PR I got locked up. Yeah. But I'm, so I'm the only dickhead. They're like, what are you here for? I don't even know. <laughs> like, yeah, my you partner don't even know. got locked up. Yeah, he got locked up, and they like came and got me. So that was that was a rough that was a rough rough time for us, because I they wouldn't get, let me off parole. Like I was like the first meat mail. It's just I ain't have Instagram. I ain't have Twitter. Right. Like they just he wanted to just keep me on parole. He just wanted me to violate because that's that's a real. If I keep you job. on for a year, you're gonna smoke a blunt. You're gonna. 
Mm-hmm. You're going to piss outside. Yeah, you're going to yeah. do something. You're going to eat the red yeah, light. You, the sun. You're going to eat a red light. You're going to do something yeah. that's going to put you back. And the fact is, I just was like, I was just avoiding that shit. I just was avoiding it until I got off. And I t- kid you not, the day, the, day be- the day before I got off, Capone's PO came to me and was like, yo, your boy got picked up by the feds. And I'm thinking he's saying, like Capone or something like he like no he violated so many people the Fed said we're impressed. <laughs> wow. You with us now. You with like, us now. We just, getting you now. Yeah, that's crazy. You graduated. Word. So he wow. went to go do his bed and, yeah. what, and what and what you did during the time that he went to jail. I mean, who Pone? When no, Pone? you. What you did? Ah, uh, what happened was. Uh, this is crazy. Now you home and he's in jail. I'm home and there was a guy who we both love. By the name of Big Pun. Mm. And Big Pun, I didn't know what to do as a solo artist. First time I met Big Pun, he asked me, he said, You Puerto Rican? And I said, Yeah. And he said, So take the ice girl off, Papito, because me and you're going to be friends. And because, you know, I'm on guard. I don't, I don't yeah. know Joe. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pun. Like, know these, just, <laughs> these, is, these is big Bronx niggas. They in my yeah. session. Uh-huh. First thing Joe says, which one of y'all got shot? And Capone reaches his hand. I'm like, what the fuck are you raising your hand for? Like, <laughs> no one brags about getting shot. Like, what the? And then Joe's like, yo, I got shot over here. And they sharing their war stories and shit. But I, I was just like, whatever. And then Pun goes, which one of y'all Puerto Rican? And I go, me. And he go, come here. Yo, bro. Stop with the ice grill, man. Like, cause, uh, cause I, you know, I'm just on point. He's like, yo, we're gonna be friends, man. And well, anyway, get to the point. Pun calls me to the session. Um, all the terror squad is there, and mm. he had this record. And he's like, yo, I want you to do the hook. And then right there, I was like, came up. What, what? Making it happen. I'm having on the corner of the Pasta League on Platinum. Classic. I mean, you roll, and I'll be ready to rock. I'll be ready to rock. And I never, I never seen nobody disrespect a full budget like that that day. Like, I'm telling you, pun was like, yo, you, 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 you want some food? And I was like, what? I never knew that studios had food budget. Yo, Pun had like a five thousand dollar food budget or something. I don't know what. His shit he was at a restaurant. Crazy. I've never seen nobody order like that. And then it was a guy named Nas Escobar. It's these, these two records changed my life. Cause all right, all right, we skipping over a whole bunch of shit. We yeah, dropped the not, War Report yeah, album. Skip. Go ahead. We dropped the War Report album, and everybody says the War Report is a classic now. Everybody says how good it is. You motherfuckers was not around when it dropped, bro. Mm. Cause that shit is a classic now. I didn't feel that shit. I went right back to selling crack. I got off parole, went right back to selling crack. Mm. A dude named Akinelli drives by me. He, he sees me make a sale, Akinelli. So Akinelli says, how much you got on you? I have $500 worth. I was an idiot. With an album out, classic album out, selling $500 worth. So Ak says, you got 500 on you? He says, you got $500 worth? He said, I said, yeah. He says, give it to me. So I give him the $500 worth. He gives me 500 bucks. But he takes the shit and he throws it in the sewer. I thought it was disrespectful. I was like, at least get the shit out. <laughs> like, I cooked the shit out of this yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, yo, he like, you know, I want you to come with me on tour. So I started doing shows with Ah. Uh, but um, I don't know what to do as a solo artist. But then there's this guy, Nas, who was on and Jungle. Let me big them both up. Right. They were on the war report, but they didn't clear it. So they sitting around doing this album called The Firm, and they say, yo, we're gonna fly you out to uh, Miami. This is the first time I ever heard of Miami. Ironically, we're here. Right. I was like, you don't fly me to Miami? I was like, I went and watched Scarface. I was like, oh shit. Hey, I'm ready. Monday call came, they didn't call me. Tuesday came, they didn't call me. Mm-hmm. Wednesday came, they didn't call me. Thursday came, they didn't call me. Friday came, they didn't call me. By Saturday and Sunday, I done gave up. Tuesday, the next week, they hit me, like, yo, can you come to California? I said, yeah. So I go to California. Um, I was supposed to have a session on Wednesday, but I got there on Tuesday. I came there a day early. I walk in the session, this nature session, and Dr. Dre is sitting there playing beats. And I'm amazed. I'm like, holy shit. I was just in jail, coming home. Where? I'm here with Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre says, yo, you got something for this? And that beat comes on. That's when I go in. 
Nori know this, yo. And Nori know that, yo. But Nori know that. Why? Because Nori bucked that. I rock and make you famous. Mm. And when that record dropped, between that and you came up, it was over. The rest was history. The rest was history. Everything was history. Everything Capone was Capone was still in prison. Capone was still in prison. I made Capone the executive producer of my... I'm the guy who invented that. I'm the guy who invented making your homie from jail. Yeah. So executive like, producer. Giving him that vibe. Yeah, giving him that look. When he came home, he came home to a tour bus, came home to a fucking... Don't don't judge me now. But a limo. Limo was the shit back then. Yeah, like, right, right now, yeah, I think yeah. he's laughing at me saying limo. Yeah, limo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, limo was that limo shit. Limo was the shit back then. And I, and I, did, a, I right. did a bit. Yeah. So I knew he didn't want to be around a lot of people when he, when he got out. So I had him... I had FUBU, I had Echo, I had all these dudes sitting on mad gear, and I had him a tour bus, and I said, yo, listen, I know how it is when you first come home. You're probably gonna need some time by yourself. So I had a whole limo for him. You know, we rented out the top floor at the Marriott, the, uh, 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 at the time Marriott was, was the shit too. And Times Square, we went, you know, I did it real, real, real big for so him. So he like, was good. Like when Branson was out, like, listen, bro, that motherfucker had just as much Branson in jail as we had on the street, I promise, unless the bitches were stealing their phone. But he had bitches coming to see me, and they used to put that shit in their so, y'all men. So the question here, you never nah. looked back and getting in jail time or none of that? Nah. What you bitches I said? You, from that point on, you never looked back as far as oh, yeah, going back to prison, oh, no, getting nah. back in trouble. Nah, I didn't want to. Right? None I of that. I didn't want to. Nah. Um, and, was, what, and, and what would you tell... Those individuals that 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 don't have that 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 support that you have, you know, coming home and and, and be able to you know get on and you know have your talent. You had a little talent, you know, right. obviously, right. And, and they scooped you up and took you on. You know, a lot of people but, don't have. But that. what I tell them, what I tell them is, first off, in life, you have to be your first fan. Don't expect a fan. You don't need your right hand man to support you. You don't need your left hand man. If you don't believe in you, no, you can't convince nobody else to. So that's the real deal. Like, I know, I just interviewed Cameron, and Cameron said, he wakes up in the morning, he looks at himself for 10 minutes in the mirror, and he says to himself how much he's the man. Well, I laughed about that, but that's not funny. Like, that's actually what you should do every day. You should wake up and say, I'm the shit. Because if you believe you the shit, then someone else is going to invest in you and to make sure that you're the shit. See, in, in order for you to, right. the way I look at it, in order for you to, to, to be the shit and believe that you're the shit, mm -hmm. you gotta be able to love yourself. Exactly, that's the same thing I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Yep, same thing I'm so, saying. So, cause I, that's just the way it is. If you don't love yourself and believe in yourself, mm -hmm. then how you expect Pablo, Julio, and yep. you know what I'm saying, Charlie to believe in you. Yep. You feel yep. me? Real talk. So, so that so so you look that, that so that jail time and that, that, that three years and a half and all that, mm -hmm. that, that woke you slam up and said, this is not it. Yep. And not only that, I'm gonna tell you something. Is you know, I grew up poor. I was rich in family, but I grew up poor. I never had a time, I never had a chance where I could just order food and do whatever. Like rap, like I said, rap really saved me. My first five thousand dollars that I made off of rap, although I made more money on the street, it felt right. No, that felt comfortable. That legal money, it just was like, you know what? And to tell you the truth. I love the rap. So it's like, sorry, it's like, it's like. You get like, paid for something you love to do. You love to do. It's like, let's, let's say you love clipping your toenails. Yeah. And somebody comes to you and says, I'm gonna pay you for clipping your toenails. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be like, what's, what's this idiot? What's this, what's this problem? Mm -hmm. But when the guy says, it's 50,000 a toenail, you're like, wait a minute, this guy might be serious. Yeah. So that's the crazy shit was like, I didn't know. Like, hip-hop is a billion-dollar world. Anybody who can't get money in hip-hop, that's their fault. Because that's like going to a whorehouse, right? We know they're selling pussy in here. Facts. Right? Mm -hmm. So if you only got $50 and you can't get it off, you're talking to the wrong person. You're in a whorehouse. They mm -hmm. here to mm -hmm. You have. So what I'm trying to say is... That's what hip hop is. Like you gotta make some money. You gotta you gotta come in there because you gotta work and put the grind in. I'm gonna tell you something that 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 is the realest shit I just learned. People will pay you for your coolness. These other people who got money, they don't got coolness. Facts. You understand what I'm trying to yeah, say? They to don't you? have no swag. They don't have swag. Yeah, hell fuck like no. you don't know how many billionaires I know. I know. Yeah, millionaires I know won't go to a club without me. Mm -hmm. Cause you know why? They can't even get in. They could buy the whole club, 
But they got to wait online like a record because they got billions. But they, this, they face is worth nothing. No, it's nothing. It's worth nothing. I know dudes that with billions, they'll wait for me. And oh, you, you want to go out Thursday? And I'm like, yo, why the fuck you need? But when I, you think about it, Facts. they don't they don't have that swag. They need that Nori swag. And I don't mind the bottles is coming out. It look like I'm popping it. But these these dudes are being there. This dude got a boat. The so how long before you took before before you really took off that you came out with the with the with the, with, the, with your album and, and went gold? Uh, and, you know, be uh, like, get, let's get to that. You that know, was 1998. That that's 1998. That's the best year of my life. You know what I'm saying? Um, me, Pun, uh, Cameron, um, uh, Corrupt, uh, DMX. Uh, we was going at it. We was like, I mean. That's the best year of my life. Um, it's the freshman cover. Mm. Uh, and um, shit, Pun went platinum first. Mm. Uh, excuse me, DMX went platinum first. DMX disrespected all of us. <laughs> okay. Shout out to DMX. But then, then Pun went platinum. Look, Pun, let me tell you something, bro. Pun was the first person that taught me what a wire is. Mm. We in Vegas doing some dumb shit. Like when they said they used to run run trades, they wasn't lying. Like for real, no. Everybody's it's all it's all past seven years. Everybody's holy moly, but TS was about that life back then. They they had fun. So we in Vegas. I think me and Pun off show was like we both picked up like I think he picked up like seventeen and I picked up like twelve and we blew to all of it. We was that young. Like we picked it up and just the spent rent. it. And that's why, like, we used to, like, like Joe used to be the fun police to us. Like, we used to be scared to hang around Joe because Joe yeah. used to be like, yo, hold your money. Yo, save your shit. And we didn't want to do that. Like, we were 21. We were 22 years old. We wanted to, we thought we was going to make money for the rest of our life. But anyway, one day we was in Vegas, and he goes, yo, you know what a wire is? And I was like, what? He's like, watch this. And he called Steve Ripken. He hit Steve Ripken with the illest story. I forget what he said. But it was definitely made up. He's like, yo, me and Norby stock. <laughs> and Steve Rifkin wired the money. And I never seen that shit before in my life. Like, <laughs> you know, like we in Vegas, and he wired the money, bro. He wired the money. Early. That was, um, that was, for lack of a better term, I know I said it earlier, that was probably the best of, of, of my life, like, just going through that. Like, right now, you know, me re reiterating having success with the podcast, this is my second best mm. but um well my third because i loved reggae throne too i can't front when i started doing reggae throne and people weren't getting stabbed at my shows i kind of liked it that because i used to i used to think oh, my show is, is not good unless they fight mm -hmm. like what 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 i'll be looking like no one's fighting bang 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 all right there you go they fighting now my show is hot you know what i'm saying yeah, like yeah and i went from that to doing reggae throne and Reggaeton was a, another wave, and then my third wave is 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 podcast. So how you get to so so, you never look back. Mm -hmm. Came home, soul albums, mm -hmm. they great. Um, then mm -hmm. at one point you 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 uh decided to do your podcast. You know, at one point in your life you felt it was the need to 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 bring something to hip hop as far as you know you know drink champs. <laughs> What up, what up, what up, people? You already know it's your boy Pistol Pete. Welcome back to that dog in the yard. It's that season four. I want to first and foremost thank my brother Nori for coming through and shit like that, you know, and breaking that shit down. You know what I'm saying? And that was only the part one, guys. That was only part one. We got next week part two. You know what I'm saying? This is a two part episode. So, um, like I said, man, you know, we having fun with it, man. You know what I'm saying? So. I hope you guys having fun with it as well, man. You already know. It's your boy, Pistol. Drink champ. Nori, what up? You already know. Stars all in my rings. She don't move unless it's bands, but the hood is ain't no.